I think I've mentioned this before, but generally when I first get up, at least when I first turn on the computer, one of the things I do is I always go straight to the comments. See if there's anybody asked a question or anything like that that I don't want to accidentally ignore. Anyway, one of the comments went something like, uh, did you remember to uh, set your clock ahead last night? Well, that's not exactly how it was worded, but that's what he meant. Well, no, I never even thought about it. You know, I thought about it 48 hours ago, or earlier even, but last night when I should have been thinking about it, I didn't. And usually what I'll do is, just before the, the night of the, of the time change, uh, I'll go around and I'll, I'll set all the mechanical clocks, either forward an hour or back an hour, depending on the case. Well, I didn't do it last night. And, uh, but you know what? I woke up this morning and the first clock I look at, it's a clock that automatically sets itself. Then when I go into the bathroom, the clock by the bathroom door, it's the same kind and it automatically sets itself. Then after there, I usually go straight into the kitchen and I plug in my coffee pot. Well, on my kitchen wall is another clock that automatically sets itself. Now, now these clocks are unbelievably accurate. They do such a fantastic job of setting themselves. Uh, they have nothing to do with the internet. They, they pick up a radio signal that comes from Boulder, Colorado or Fort Collins, Colorado. It's called WWV. A lot of you, uh, well not a lot of you, but some of you people, especially anybody who's like a ham operator, hi Tony, uh, well you'll know what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, so anyway, I turned my computer on and I'm noticing my computer did not change itself. Now, my computer always changes itself. In fact, it's the last thing to be wrong. What, what happened here? So I'm thinking about this and then I remembered yesterday I received a notice from Windows, uh, Windows 10, they were going to do a big update. Why is it that whenever Windows does an update, instead of things getting better, some things get worse? Anyway, I've had to go into my settings and, you know, I made a, I made a change uh, and uh, clicked the, the reset button and now we got the right time. Anyway, let's get on with the model here. Now some of you are going to remember, Sunday is pizza day. And although it's only 11 minutes after 10 here, um, yeah, I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this all week. Uh, normally I wait until the afternoon, but uh, for some reason this morning I just couldn't wait. Now, as I mentioned several days ago, I put myself on a thousand calorie a day diet. And that piece of pizza, before I started gnawing into it, well, it had 617 calories. So that's over half of my allotted amount for today. Yep, we're going to be having celery and lettuce for supper. Now, about this thing. I screwed up yesterday. Uh, let me uh, move in a little bit closer and we'll talk about that. Okay, I'm pretty sure that everybody noticed that we bent the ladder in the wrong place yesterday. Notice I say we when things go wrong. All right, let's, uh, let's uh, forget about this idea of having a piece of paper underneath it, underneath the, the photo etch piece to help bend the photo etch up to get it started. That, that's a good idea, but I, I think that I can figure out another way of doing this. So I'm going to not do this anymore, probably. And um, yeah, now as far as having the the paper, just let me get Andy's photo edge bender here back to normal. You know, well, this is sort of off the subject, but every time I use this thing, I'm reminded how I wanted to get myself a a home milling machine so I could make stuff like this. Now, I, I probably wouldn't make it as good as this, but I, I could make stuff like this. Um, I do have a fairly good home metal lathe, you know, for turning metal parts. It, it actually works pretty good. It'll, it'll take something up to uh, an inch or a little better in diameter in the through hole, those of you who know how these things work. Um, anyway, uh, now the idea was <clears throat> that this piece of paper was going to be on top of the photo etch part. Okay, and you clamped it down, 
And then when you when you bend it up, you know what? I'm going to slip the macro lens on, and uh, then we'll come in from a different angle here, and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Okay, we've already removed a ladder from here for something, and uh, I, I don't want to use a ladder to demonstrate, so we'll just get a piece of scrap here. I think I should be able to nip this off. There we go. Now we are going to try and make our bend immediately between these two pieces of uh, connection. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to anneal it. This is something that I don't do every day, but I know that it, I know that it'll work. Just use our lighter here and. Okay, now the, the metal right there should bend a lot easier than anywhere else. Theoretically, anyway. Okay, two things. First of all, I did clean the soot off of it. So all we do is have the discoloration going on from the heat. And the second thing is, I know that yesterday, as well as being underneath the piece of card, it was sitting on top of... Give myself more room here. Get Mr. T's poking device, I can maybe do it better, sort of dig into it. Okay, now now right here is where the where we want to make our bend, right? Maybe I should be turning this around so that we can see those those two little uh come on, turn around. There we go. Now get it underneath again. Okay, now we, we want to bend it right about here. Make a little mark. I'm going to cut out the dead spots here while I'm trying to get this adjusted. As I'm messing around here right now trying to get this adjusted, in the corner of my eye I can see my plate. And the fork is on it. And no pizza. I don't know what could have happened to it. All right, which one of you viewers snuck in while I was doing my last edit and stole my pizza? Okay. Well, maybe I should go... You know what, i got to shove it back just a little bit more. Just a little bit. Okay, that's somewhat better. Now, we're going to clamp it down. Now, I, I do know that last yesterday we had the piece of paper lifting it up. But today we're just going to use our, our razor blade here. I'm sure we can get underneath it. Okay, now, what was happening was yesterday I did not allow for the fact that when I bend it up, it's not going to bend up sharp where the, where the nose of the... Uh, uh, of this thing comes, uh, it's going to go around the paper, which is going to move the radius out. Now that's what should happen here. We'll just give it a try. Okay, now, notice how the radius is out a bit, the thickness of the paper. Now this maybe wasn't a very good example of how to do it. Now I'm going to show you the way uh, Nigel had intended for it to be done. And Nigel, I hope I get it right this time. Now as long as I'm talking about other YouTube creators here, guess who's back? Yeah, it's Scott. And he put up a little video explaining why he went down. Go on his channel and listen to it. It's not that long. Okay, I've pulled the camera back a little bit so that you can see the entire bed of Andy's bender here. Now, this is the way I think it's supposed to go. You're supposed to take your card and stick it in and then bring it up so that it will be it will be flush with the nose of the of the bender. Some something like this. Now, now this is the way I think it's supposed to go. Um 
I'm just I'm looking straight down on it right now, trying to uh, eyeball what's going on here. And of course, because I've got it on record, it's not going to want to cooperate. Maybe if I go like this, it'll it'll catch it a little better. The edge won't be so low. Oh, oh come on! Do I have to reshoot this thing? Sometimes I make myself look like such a dummy. Okay, maybe if I put a little bit of tension on it, just a little, we can move it in here. It's just, I think my original idea was right. You come in like this and slide it up to the edge. It should, it should do it. Okay. Oh, you know what it is? It's not going in any further because the uh, shaft from, from this thing is, is uh, and the spring that's in there is uh, holding it out. Um, okay, I'm going to redo this. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make a little notch. Maybe I am a dummy. I'm going to make a little notch here, right about there. Okay, once again, thank goodness I can cut out the idiot parts. Okay, now I'm just going to put just a little bit of tension on it. I'll try this again. Yeah, I couldn't understand why this wasn't working. Okay. No, it went in too far on the other end. I can just hear the computers clicking all over the world on stop. I'm trying to get this perfect so that when I when I zoom in you can see sort of what's going on better. Well that's that's pretty good. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna move in just a little bit here. Now actually this card I'm noticing now when I'm right down here looking at it nice and close like you are, it should be in just a tiny bit more here. Otherwise, the effect is not going to work. All right, now, now right there, where we would want to make our bend, if that's where we wanted to make the bend, that is, it, it's pretty much right. Okay, so now let's pretend that underneath the card, the piece of photo etch, the little ladder is coming up, coming out rather. So then when we take and we bend it up like this, it's sort of, the card kind of gives way just a little bit. Now, now that I'm looking at this card, I don't think it's thick enough. I think I needed something just maybe a little bit thicker for the effect to really be noticeable. But the card will soften the or ease the bend. And, uh, yeah, I can see where this, this would work, Nigel. And I'm pretty sure this is what you were talking about. So I'll, I'll just have to remember that. Now, on our real hood, this uh, turret rangefinder thing sits on top of this part right here. And it will on the model, too. But the idea is that on the real hood, it would swivel around, which would mean that this ladder that goes down the back would not always line up with this ladder here. Um, but I guess the idea would be if the crew had to get on the top for any reason, they'd probably straighten it out and make it easy for them. On the other hand, maybe they wouldn't. <laughs> they did funny things back then. People were so expendable. Uh, they could get away with stuff then that they can't get away with now. Uh, anyway, enough of that. Uh, let's just see what's going to happen here you know, sort of the moment of truth here. Are we going to, uh, I gotta get this so I can just hold on to it just right. Are we going to be able to uh, use it the way it is or am I gonna have to rebend it? No, it doesn't have to be perfect here. Um, maybe I'm gonna have to 
grab it just a little bit different. I'll use my more pointy tweezers, even though I know they're going to mark it. These ones are Tony's have this, these rubber tips on them, and they they don't scratch stuff as bad. In fact, they don't scratch stuff at all. But uh, they're just a little bit too heavy duty to poke in there. Okay. You know what? I should put the macro lens on. Okay, I notice we got a little piece of lint on there. Oh, got it off. Try and pick this up. Come on. Okay, I'm going to probably get my finger in your way here. Oh. Okay, I can see I'm grabbing it in the wrong place. I should be grabbing it down near the bottom, right? Okay, I think this will maybe work better. Can we drop it in place there? Okay. You know what, I don't think I'm going to mess with it. A couple of viewers made the suggestion, why don't you just glue it in place and then and then maybe like like hold hold it down with your with your finger and then bend the bottom of the ladder into place. Well, we wouldn't even need to glue the bottom of the ladder. It could just sort of hang there. I mean, it's not going to get any at least it shouldn't unless when I was doing the rigging I caught a piece of uh easy line on it and bent it or something like that. But it, I think that, I think I'm just gonna try and glue it right down there, just just like that. It would have been nicer if we had a bend, had the bend come out just a little further. Um, I know, I know this is right now it's reversed to the way it was in Andy's bender, but but if we had have had the bend more out between number five and six, um, it would have it would have been better, but. I, I, do, I do think, uh, I know I'm sort of thinking as I'm poking here. I'm just going to recompose myself, and I think I'm going to try and glue it right there. I don't know what I should use. Um, if I use the uh, the CA, quit poking at it. If I was to use the CA, it's going to leave a little light, a little light uh, mark, but at least it would be clear. And then maybe I could put some uh, flat clear over top of it to get rid of the glint. Um, on the other hand, maybe I should try and 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 straighten this bend out, and then rebend later. That that might be a thought too. You know, if I was to just take this off and and just rebend it, straighten it out. I mean, and then rebend later. I think I'm going to do that. Okay, the first thing I did was I straightened it as best I could just using my fingers to put as few scratches on as possible. But, uh, you know, I can see where I have kind of uh, got the uh, the oxidation scratched off there. Um, then I used the, uh, the Tamiya pliers here to flatten it the rest of the way. I know that the tendency is to think, well, you just lay it on your anvil and flatten it, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know which side is the worst. I want to have the worst side as the inside of the bend. And then uh, I've got a bit here that is uh, 32 thousandths of an inch in diameter. I think that would make a, a nice inside radius. I think I, I'm just going to... You know, I'm just eyeballing it and thinking what would look right, and I'm thinking a bit about that diameter will be just about right. Not that anybody's going to really notice anyway. All right. Now, remember, we wanted we want the bend to be past number five. In other words, between five and six, maybe a smidgen more. One, two. Three, four, five. So if we lay it right on here, like this. OK, 
Okay, something like this. Now, if I was to take this thing here so that I can, kind of, well, it's magnetic, okay. Well, actually, that's, that's a blessing in disguise. Okay, so we want the bend to come right there, right, guys? Okay, so now, you've seen me do this way back almost two years ago on the Bismarck, so this is nothing new. Now, I'm going to just press this down to get it, get the bend started. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Now, um, what can I put underneath here that's going to, where's my razor blade? Okay, I just want to roll this back up here, just, just a little bit. I know Andy's bender would work a lot better here, but... Oh, did I get my finger in your way? I hope not. Okay, now I, th I think we're a little closer to what we should be. And, and I think we got a pretty... Uh, no, it could have been bent a little bit more. Um, maybe we can do that afterwards, after it gets glued on. Now, right after I did that, I was reminded of a comment that I received. And, first of all, I want to try and make a little mark. Yeah, that'll show up. Uh, so I know where the center of the screen is. Because what we have here is, oops, is, is blue tack, right? And the idea is you take your, your sheet of blue tack or, or package of blue tack and, and leave the, uh, the paper on it. And then the idea is, now I've lost my ladder. Okay, I found it. Okay, so you take your ladder. Now I've lost the drill bit. Is it under the blue tack? I, I must have put it back in the uh, container here. Uh, bear with me. Okay. Maybe I am as dumb as I look. I couldn't find it. This one here is a smidgen larger. It's uh, approximately 40 thousandths. So the idea is that when you press down, the blue tack will mold around this thing and uh, make the bend a little bit sharper. So let's just see how that's going to work. I'm just slowly going down here. Okay, are we at right angles now? Let's, let's just uh, move this out. Yeah, almost a perfect right angle. Yeah. Okay, so the blue tack idea works. I, I, I was pretty sure it would. I was pretty sure it would. Okay, let's lay this thing on the on the uh, on the turret. And uh, and see it. Maybe it could have gone just a little bit more yet. Well, let's just see. Let's see what happens. Okay, our drill bit. It was under the blue tack, just barely under it. If I had to move the blue tack just a little bit, I'd have seen it. Okay. But it could be here that all is gonna all is well that ends well if you know what I mean. I, I think that if I hold this down like that and then glue it right up as far as it will go in this in this little U-shaped bracket, because I'm pretty sure that's what's 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 supposed to happen. Um it doesn't look like it's straight in there. It looks like it could go more to the left. Um, well, I'm not ready to glue yet anyway. Now, yeah, and then afterwards, after the glue is set, I'll hold it down with my finger, and then I will bend this latter part in just a little bit so that it's it's more in line with with everything. And yet, on the other hand, Maybe maybe what we'll do is before we actually bend this in, we'll see how it lines up when it's on the other part. See, see the bend. Maybe the bend could have come just a little bit more this way. Yet then, 
it might have been bumping against this flange here that has all the rivets along it. Okay, let's, let's get some glue on that. I think we have time yet today to do that. Okay, everything is pretty much back in the same place as it was before. And uh, what I've done is I've reshaped Mr. T's poking device here so it's a little bit more, not so blunt. And uh, I, I don't know if I can... See, the idea is I want to move that ladder just slightly to the left. It just doesn't want to go. Well, you spoiled it, didn't you, Ron? All right, I bent it slightly. Does that look a little fluffy on the top of rung number two, or is that a scratch? Well, I couldn't brush it off, so I guess it's a scratch. Okay. Oh, for goodness sakes. All right. It just won't stay on there. I'm wondering if maybe I should put the, put a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, uh, clear on there and then see my hope was to use CA glue I even have it ready in the little container now all right let me look at the monitor from, from my perspective I think we got it almost exactly right now what I would like to do is hold down on rung number three can I hold down on rung number three without moving it and then get some CA right there between one and two okay let's let that cure I think we've got it in the exact right place that's going to be to the place where it's not going to fall off under normal careful handling. Let's let that cure. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if today's video was late uploading because I had a lot more recorded than I thought I did. I've been sitting here behind the computer editing out for oh, going on two hours and uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to call this video quits for today, folks. Thanks for watching and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow.